ECW, you were like one of the original members of that promotion, made your debut in 1997. What made you decide to go to ECW and leaving the WWE? Um, at the time, um, you know, I really enjoyed Aldo. Um, you have to understand, I was a very young man. I was in my, you know, I was 21, 22 years old. Um, you know, and I had wrestled for the WWE since 93, like late 93 to 97. And in that time period, almost four years, I felt like I'd overgrown, like outgrown Aldo. And I was ready to kind of, you know, I was a, an underneath guy. I was a mid-level to underneath guy. I understood that. And that's kind of the way it should be. I was learning the ropes, but I felt like I'd gotten to a point where, you know, I need to kind of grow. Um, and I outgrew the character. And I certainly outgrew the push. You know, I wanted to do more. So I had got a meeting with Vince McMahon and uh, I expressed that. And this was around the time Scott Hall, who was a person, good personal friend of mine, and Kevin Nash was also a good friend of mine. They went to uh, WCW for the end to do the NWO. And I knew that those guys, you know, they were always like, you know, we can get you a job down here. We can, you know, get you in the NWO, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I went to Vince and I asked Vince for my release, um, you know, which was, again, they're not, they weren't doing anything with me. I thought for sure Vince would say yes. Uh, and then I could just kind of go and, you know, expand and, and explore my, you know, another character, just do, you know, just do something else. I thought it was time. And Vince said no, which kind of surprised me. Um, and I was like, okay. And he suggested, because um, I still had like a year left on my deal, uh, that I go to uh, Memphis, Tennessee, which was Jerry Lawler, Jerry the King Lawler's uh, small territory promotion. Uh, if you ever watch the show, The Young Rock, Mm -hmm. Right around the same time where Rocky was down there, I was down there too. I remember Rock was down there at that time. So I went down there around that time because he wanted me to be a heel and learn how to work as a heel. Um, so I went down there. I was down there for about eight weeks, worked with uh, a lot of people down there and a lot of good people. And uh, But anyways, at the end of the day, um, Paul Heyman, Tommy Dreamer, uh, RVD, Sabu, uh, we're down in Sandman. We're down there doing the ECW gimmick, like uh, ECW versus Jerry the King Lawler's WWF guys. You know, they were doing this angle for ECW. And I got to meet with Paul Heyman and those guys. And, um, you know, I, Paul got and took a liking to me and to my work. And uh, so basically, long story short, he negotiated with Vince to have me uh, go to ECW and work for ECW. And uh, the rest is kind of history. Yeah, I mean, ECW was like this renegade promotion, this hardcore wrestling, smash mouth, really pioneered uh, so many elements that we see today in professional wrestling, kind of led the birth to the Attitude Era, along with, along with what WCW was doing at the time with the NWO, just kind of, you know, really ushering in this new era of professional yeah. wrestling. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was, uh, well, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was time for a change. Um, wrestling had grown very stale. If you remember, WCW was doing, you know, horrible matches with like Hulk Hogan against the, uh, you know, Kevin Sullivan's Dungeon of Doom, mm -hmm. and I mean, those are horrible. And uh, WWE again was doing, you know, just bad stuff. It was very cookie cutter, very. Um, you know, almost cartoonish, and ECW was the furthest thing from it. It was, uh, it was hardcore, uh, not just in the, in the style, but also in the storylines. Uh, you know, the kind of music we were coming out to cool music. Um, you know, the, the music of the day, hardcore like rock and roll or hip hop. We were we were super cool. Where the other guys were just like lame. And uh, and people started to recognize, like, well, what the hell is going on? Like, and, it's, and again, that's when the Attitude Era and, uh, you know, Scott and Kevin with their, you know, they just everybody started to kind of ramp up the cool factor, you know, and uh, and, and went that route. And obviously that's when it, it all took off and uh, all three promotions. And you could say they kind of caught a, the Attitude Era was really kind of ECW's idea, which I think it was. But, you know, that's whatever, um, you know, but it was just it was just a change in uh, a drastic change in what they were doing, what everybody was doing, really.
Yeah, it seemed like all promotions were thriving. And with ECW, you had uh, just an amazing group of talent. You mentioned oh, yeah. music earlier. Guys like Rob Van Dam came out to Pantera. Sandman right. came out to Metallica. You had all this really, it was just, it was cutting edge. Yeah. You, yeah. Really, it, it was, really it was. was. And again, to hear the, you know, to hear that music in these arenas. I mean, we had, we had to stay like, you know, uh, if you went to a WCW event or a WWE event, the music wasn't like, you know, it is today. If you went to house shows, a lot of it was just glorified PA work where we had like a, you know, a nightclub DJ pumping through these huge sounds uh, and entrance music in these arenas where you can really hear the, it was just captivating. It was never done like that before. Now, of course, you know, the arenas are different, much more state of the art. So the sound is better. But back then, believe it or not, you know, you're going to think I'm full of shit. Sometimes, man, in um, the WWE, especially for European tours, we had a boom box with a cassette and they would put the microphone to it. And that's how you'd hear the wrestlers' entrance music. That's how lame it was. Wow. Yeah, and WCW too, because it just it wasn't what you think it is. All these arenas were kind of outdated, unless you were doing TV tapings. Then you had the trucks, and we brought in our own sound. But when you did house shows, it was very bare bones. You know, you didn't have all the monitors and lights and stuff. You just had the ring and the the lights above, and it was very old school. Where the ECW and Heyman figured out the music it's a vibe you know and to hear like cool music pumping through and it starts you know it's shaking the building and you hear enter sandman and the lights are off you know it's like what the hell man it was just it was super dope and way ahead of its time and now that's just how it's done today